So the budget of the Ashkash Horror Film Festival films, all of them together, probably equals less than $2 million. They made House at the End of the Street for an estimated $6.9 million. I'm just saying. Yes, that's right, folks. We're taking a look at the house at the end of the street. Finally getting to see this film. Came out last week, and so we're going to knock on its door and see what's inside. I'm going to give you, though, the synopsis as told by IMDb, written up by the company. Now listen to this. Newly divorced Sarah and her daughter Elsa find a house of their dreams in a small, upscale, rural town. But when startling and unexplainable events begin to happen, Sarah and Elsa learn the town is in the shadows of a chilling secret. I don't want to see that film. Too bad that's not the film I saw. I, I mean, yes, they do move into a house, okay, but there's really not a, there's kind of a chilling secret, but the town's not living in the shadow of it. The only thing they're living in the shadow of is the fact that they've got this house where there was this double murder that's right next door to Sarah and Elisa's new house, and everybody hates this house because it's bringing down their property value. That's why they hate it. And the son, who's the only survivor of the family from the uh, double murder, okay, is living in a house and everybody hates him. Why? Because it's bringing down their property value. I mean, and granted, the guy is creepy and strange and he's kind of the outcast guy, but people hate him. Why? He didn't... He... I can understand them being leery because he's living in a house where there's a double murder, but really, because of property values, that's why this entire town hates this kid, except for maybe the sheriff who's been trying to stand up for him. Now, you do get um, some interesting relationship trying development here between Elsa, which is played by Jennifer Lawrence, and Sarah, played by Elizabeth Shue, but it's like they don't want to go too deep in the drama or in the development between this relationship. They just they throw bits and pieces of it, but Elizabeth Shue and, and, and uh, you know, El, Jennifer Lawrence aren't really on the screen together all that often to really develop this. Now, I know that's what they're going for. The mom's not home all the time because she's, a think, a doctor. Never really go into it. She works in the hospital, uh, and they got her working double shifts, but they never really go there, you know, with it. But it's still, it, it, was, it was like they were trying to do it, but not do it and try to play a fine line and it failed to where you don't feel any emotion or chemistry at all between these two so when you get to the near the end of the film where you want some growth in these characters there is none because there was nothing to grow on okay you, you know you got the sheriff in here who they kind of do a relationship thingy with her uh, with the mom and the sheriff guy but they don't really go anywhere there either it's like they touch on these things but they don't want to go too far because uh they don't want to take away from the main story which was very predictable okay now uh, on the plus side i did enjoy max uh, throughout's uh ryan okay the creepy guy the, the kid the son who lived in the house where there was double murder the only surviving member of this family i liked his creepy his character i thought it was the most well developed and the most depth to it and it's supposed to because he's kind of you know a lot of things revolve around him but man everybody else in this is just shallow cliches and stereotypes and you know You've got a hundred and some odd minutes. You can develop a few things more than what they did. And there were a couple of make you jump scare moments, but on the whole, it was a little creepy. But unfortunately, with it, the predictability of this script, uh, it didn't really make it scary at all. I saw it coming from the first act, and then the second kind of reveal saw that coming before the second act was over. So by the end, I was like, yep, that's where they went. And they took from a number of movies. They took from uh, uh, Psycho, you know, Sleepaway Camp. They took away from just Captivity. Just took a number of chunks of different films and put it in here, which could have worked had they developed a better script for it. In the end, the only person you really care for is creepy guy <laughs> who lives in the house and in order for this film to work you need more than that one and a half stubs alone for max Therat's character uh, uh, just liked his character and how well developed it was it's unfortunate the rest of the film wasn't as well done as his his character 
And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stuff.